Welcome to our free and live webinar where we are highlighting Tiny MCE, uh, an incredibly prominent web editor. And uh, this uh, webinar is brought to you by cloudaccess.net. We are a fully managed WordPress and Joomla hosting provider. I encourage everybody to go to cloudaccess.net right on our homepage and just launch a site. Uh, we, uh, we provide uh, free, uh, unlimited websites, keep them as long as you'd like. And uh, so uh, with that, my name is Jonathan Gaffel, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Uh, I'd like to introduce Robert Collings and Michael Froman from eFox, the creators of Tiny MCE. Uh, Robert and Michael, are you there? Indeed, I am. Okay, fantastic. Good deal. So um, I'm going to pass it along, uh, and, uh, and we'll get this going. So uh, if, uh, if you guys would like to take over the screen and, and start showing off the product. Will do, but thank you so much, Jonathan. So hopefully everyone uh, can see a uh, nice picture of uh, WordPress Calypso with TinyMCE in it. Confirmed. Yeah. Awesome. So look, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. It looks like we've got a really good turnout. Um, very, very pleased to be with you to talk about TinyMCE, a product that many of you probably use quite a number of times uh, without even being aware of it. So uh, as Jonathan mentioned, my name is Robert Collins. I manage the marketing and digital experience at eFox. And joining me uh, is Michael Froman, our Director of Client Services. When you buy something from eFox, it's very often Michael's team who is uh, supporting you. So Michael will be running through uh, and supporting us with some demos, which are going to be fantastic. So the agenda for today, uh, as you can see, there are quite a number of uh, demos. I'm going to keep my yakking to a uh, minimum as, much, as best I can, although as a marketer, I do like to talk. So we're going to run through with a very quick intro of eFox and Tiny. Uh, we'll demo uh, Tiny in WordPress, Tiny in the advanced, and uh, one of our premium solutions for WordPress called uh, PowerPaste. We'll have a look at our new cloud offering and our SDK, and uh, we're going to demo two new premium plugins as well. So about eFox, eFox was uh, founded around about 17 years ago in uh, Brisbane, Australia, and it's still home to our engineering hub. We have grown substantially since then, though. We now have uh, offices in, uh, or on three continents here in Palo Alto in California, where I am. Uh, our tiny MCE development team is in EMEA in Sweden, and as I've mentioned, the engineering team is uh, down in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, our mission is pretty simple at eFox, which is to empower everyone to be able to create great content. And eFox has been the number one creator of WYSIWYG editors since around 1999. Uh, but, you know, we don't look in the review mirror too much. Uh, we continue to innovate and we, in fact, lead the development of cognitive and AI solutions for content creators around the world. Uh, as I mentioned, you probably use this, uh, even if you're not aware of us. Here are some of uh, the companies where you'll find eFox solutions and very, very often Tiny MCE as well. The most notable one that's relevant for us today, of course, is WordPress. So quickly about Tiny. It was founded in 2004 by uh, Joachim Linkvist and Johann Spocky Sorlin. It's become one of the most popular rich text editors on the planet. It's downloaded uh, more than 15 million times directly from our website. We have more than 70 million websites using Tiny EMC, including internal applications. Uh, we have at least a million developers building really, really amazing applications with Tiny EMC. Our new cloud uh, is already in excess of 1 billion hits. That's actually an old number. It's probably tracking more towards 2 billion. And we've seen uh, in excess of 5,000 commits to Tiny EMC uh, on GitHub, which is an, it's an open source project. So it's a, a, a project that is received a lot of love from the community. We're very, very proud of that. So as I say, I'm going to keep my um, talk yet yeah, to a bit of a, to hopefully a limit today. I'm going to hand over quickly to uh, Michael, who is going to demo uh, Tiny MC in WordPress. to talk about how we can uh, enhance that uh, content creation experience with Tiny MC Advanced, and he will demo also our power paste for WordPress. Uh, solution. So, Michael, if you want to grab control of the screen, and uh, we'll leave you to it. All right. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Robert, if you will confirm that you're now seeing my desktop. Indeed, I am. All right. 
So as, as Robert mentioned, we are already the, the default text editing component in WordPress. What you're seeing here is current copy of WordPress 473, completely vanilla install, no extra themes, no extra anything, just what do I get when I install WordPress? If you've created a post, which I'm assuming most of you have, you've been on this screen at some point, and this visual editor that you're looking at right now is TinyMCE. So every WordPress user, when they simply install the standard core WordPress product, they gain access to our editor. WordPress, as a part of that installation or implementation, you'll notice the toolbar here gives you a, a fairly limited set of choices for what you can do in a, in a WYSIWYG view or WYSIWYG way to manipulate the content. They also offer you a text view, so you can go in and see the text behind that content. Uh, but between the text and the visual view, the number of options you have here to do any kind of real formatting to the content is fairly limited. Now, if you've used TinyMC in any other applications, you're probably scratching your head a little bit going, gosh, there's, there's a whole bunch of other things that TinyMC does, but I don't see any of them here. Well, the, the people who make WordPress made a, a conscious decision to control how complex the user interface is for creating a post by default. So what they wanted to do is provide really common things people need, bold, italic, uh, block level formatting, bullet list, inserting links, et cetera, but they didn't want to overwhelm people with the amount of possible toolbar buttons. Luckily, some of the folks who actually work on WordPress created a plugin called TinyMCE Advanced. TinyMCE Advanced is a free plugin. It's maintained by a gentleman named Andrew Oz. Andrew Oz works for Automatic, who are the, at the end of the day, the kind of the owners, the keepers of WordPress. So if you download TinyMCE Advanced for free and install it, when you then go to access a post, you'll notice that the toolbar gets a, potentially gets a lot busier. We have a lot more choices. We also have a menu bar that we did not have before. So when you download TinyMCE Advanced and, and activate it, it's got a setting screen, and effectively what this is going to do is it's allowing you to put back a great many of the default functions that exist in Tiny that the, uh, the makers of WordPress decided not to have in there by default. So for example, we'll drag the code option up there to the top, we'll save our changes, we'll come back here, we'll refresh the screen again, and now you'll notice I have the ability to get the code view. And it wouldn't be a live demo if something didn't work. So let's go back here. Let's put source code up there, remove that code one, save it. Hopefully this will work. It's, it's, it's always fun to do live demos. There we go. So now I can see, and this is Tiny's standard source code editing UI. So if you're using Tiny not inside of WordPress, this is a way to get to the raw HTML behind the WYSIWYG view that you're, you're creating. So again, Tiny MC Advanced is free. It's available from the WordPress plugin catalog, and it allows you to bring in a whole great many number of plugins, of buttons, that are parts of TinyMCE that you don't get by default. The code view is one that's very popular. The other one that's very popular is full screen. Uh, realistically, if you're writing a lot of content, it, it's not necessarily useful to have such a small window to work with. So WordPress has this thing they call distraction free, but you'll notice the editor doesn't get any bigger. If you go to full screen view, the editor literally takes over the whole page. So there are, there are lots of functions in TinyMC Advanced that people who are used to WordPress, I'm sorry, used to Tiny, want in WordPress. Free download, you install it like any other plugin, and then you gain access to all this functionality. So if you've never seen or used TinyMC Advanced, pretty easy to install and, and certainly moves you in a direction towards more powerful editing. The other thing that I want to talk about, and now we're moving from the realm of what you get for, quote, free or open source as a part of WordPress, uh, is we offer one particular plugin today for your, your WordPress environment, and it's called PowerPaste, and I've already got it turned on. So we're going to come back here, and I'm going to open a different post here, just starting at a blank slate here. And the use case for PowerPaste is very simple. A large number of people will start with a Microsoft Office document, Word, Excel, and they will want to take something they received as an, as an Office document, and they will want to paste it into the editor, and they want it to, quote, just work. 
And just work really means a couple of things for them. So we're gonna, we're gonna showcase real quick what that means. So first of all, you'll notice that PowerPace gives me two choices. Do I wanna keep or remove the formatting? I'm gonna start with remove because it's the simplest use case. And what remove formatting is gonna do is it's gonna bring over the structure of my document. So I have headings, I have lists, I have images, et cetera. But what it's not going to do is it's not going to bring over all of the discrete styling from my Word document. To show you the alternative, I'm going to paste and say keep formatting. Well, now you'll notice that I've got some funny font behaviors in here that I didn't have before. And that ties to the fact that Word provides us a, a rather verbose HTML representation of this content. And for most use cases, if you bring over all of that discrete styling, you're gonna get pages on your blog that look, or website that look very different. So most people don't want that. So I just did undo to go back to the remove formatting view of this document. And effectively what that does is it keeps the structural elements of the Word document the same. So let's come back over here to our Word document. So I have a heading, I have a list, I have paragraphs, I have subheadings. So I want the semantic meaning of that to stay with the document. But what I don't want is the fact that this Word document chose Arial 11 as its paragraph font size. I don't necessarily want that to come over to my WordPress site. If my WordPress site relies on different fonts and different sizes, if I keep formatting, all of that is gonna end up in here as inline styles. So if you decide to change it later, it's gonna be a mess to fix. To give you a sense, and I, I won't show a lot of HTML during the, the webinar, but to give you a sense of what we get from Word and what we do with it, uh, I've opened up here just a standard programmer text editor tool. This first uh, tab is the original HTML that Microsoft Office gave us when we copied out of Word. You'll notice there are well over a thousand lines of HTML in that original file. And without getting into too much detail here, uh, this thing is chock full of these kinds of inline style declarations all throughout the content to describe how it looks. When I did remove formatting, this is the end result of the document. Now I have two lines of heading up here. So literally we have 27 lines of HTML as a clean result from starting with 1,039 lines of HTML. So the whole benefit of PowerPaste is to bring the structural nature of my document over but without losing uh, the semantic meaning, but not bringing over the styles. The second thing PowerPaste does, and this is the other thing that's very powerful with PowerPaste, is you'll notice that the image from my Word document, I had a couple of images in here, they made it over into the content. Without PowerPaste, the text of my Word document would still make it over. There is some fundamental pasting functionality built into Tiny, but what it would not do at all is bring over any of the images. So by using PowerPaste, when I copied and I pasted, the image ended up here and it ended up in the media library. Now the reason you're seeing the same image a couple times, I've done some tests and we pasted a couple times during the demo. So it, it ended up with multiple copies of the same image in here because I was copying and pasting repeatedly. Uh, but these end up in the media library. So the, the, the nice aspect of PowerPaste is my Word document had images in it, multiple images. And by simply copying and pasting, A, the images stayed in the document, made it over to WordPress, and B, they got chucked into the media library. So that's some of the power that PowerPaste can bring to you while you're creating content in WordPress. So Rob, I think we're gonna go back to you now for a few more slides, and then we're gonna come back for a little more demo. Absolutely, thank you, Michael. So hopefully, uh, Michael, I'll get you to confirm where um back on the agenda. That is correct. Awesome, so we're powering through this, which is fantastic. So look, I'm going to uh, change focus just a little uh, now to uh, discuss, um, just away from WordPress, to talk about Tiny MC outside of the WordPress ecosystem and for what it's worth, I mean, Cloud Access obviously are a Joomla host as well, and a lot of what we're talking about um, is relevant to Joomla. Um, the power paste for WordPress plugin is currently only within WordPress, uh, but we are looking at, at Joomla and of course Tiny MCE is uh, available for Joomla as well. Um, so very, very recently EFOX 
launched a product called Tiny MC Cloud. It's something we're very, very excited about. We've seen really, really remarkable adoption of it already. We're getting in excess of 100 new users on cloud a day, and um, you know our our hits on our global cloud network CDN, if you like, are uh, through the roof. So we're very, very excited about this. So Tiny MC Cloud is the sim easiest and simplest way for most developers to get up and running with Tiny MC. Uh, we realize that you know, on this webinar today, whilst we have a lot of WordPress users, uh, there are developers who do build applications uh, and often they'll require a rich text editor in the solution. And so uh, we'd like to just quickly run through some of the benefits of uh, the cloud option for you. So cloud is free. Uh, it comes with a free image proxy um, that basically is a server-side component that takes away a lot of the hassles of uh, remote issues with cores and uh, cross-site shifting issues on um, or resource sharing issues, I should say, on, on uh, images that have been served from uh, domains other than the one where Tiny MC is installed. Uh, you get a bunch of things like editor version control and the ability to uh, get premium plugins and solutions very, very simply. Uh, delivered into the editor instance. Some some developers they do and prefer and will require or use uh, the SDK still, and that is fine. It's especially true if uh, on-premises is essential in the deployment. Uh, it's the same robust editor experience you expect from Tiny and ZE. There's a little bit more flexibility around the ability um, to remove plugins from the place the payload, and this is something that will come to our cloud quite soon. I think the most exciting thing in the way we've uh, built this, though, is that we do enable a mixed deployment. And what that basically means is that you can deliver a variation of the Tiny MC editor and our premium plugin solution via an on-premises or via our cloud. But for a lot of people uh, who don't have to have the, the uh, technical or system resources to maintain server-side components, they can deploy our uh, cloud services in that case whilst keeping, say, the editor or other things on-prem. You can find out more about this on, on tinymc.com and also on efox.com. So as Michael uh, has shown you, we do have uh, a premium plugin available for WordPress. Uh, we also have a, a large number of premium plugins available for our cloud and SDK editions of uh, TinyMC. So Michael has talked about TinyMC PowerPaste. He's uh, highlighted the amazing things it can do with content from Microsoft Word. What he didn't uh, cover off just due to time is that it also uh, makes light work of bringing tables into TinyMC, and that uh, also works in PowerPaste for WordPress. Uh, so it will create HTML compliant tables. Um, will bring cell content into the editor. And look, let's face it, most people really do struggle with editing uh, even the most plain vanilla HTML, let alone uh, tables. So it saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle for content creators and delivers a much better content creation experience uh, for people using WordPress uh, as part of their business. Uh, and likewise, with regards to internet content, it will bring in um, that content, strip classes uh, and inline styles, as Michael showed you with the, uh, the Word content and also will automatically generate links to uh, external images and things of that nature. One of our most other, uh, or most popular other plugins is uh, a plugin called Spellchecker Pro. Now you may be thinking, well, most browsers have spell checkers in them, why would anyone want that? Um, well, the reality is that where you have or require globally consistent spelling, and this is very, very true for uh, businesses with you know, more than one office, uh, or where you have uh, technical words that are specific to your business or industry, um, Spellchecker Pro starts to deliver that kind of consistency across all of your editor instances, wherever your people are. And uh, in regards to cloud, uh, we also can take care of the server-side spell checking components as well. So we've got you covered uh, in regards to uh, both cloud and SDK and spell checking. We also have a bunch of other plugins that I'll quickly, quickly run through before we get back to our demo. Uh, we have an accessibility checker that checks uh, content for accessibility compliance. 
Uh, it helps authors who have, would typically have very little knowledge of accessibility requirements, helps them deliver and create accessibility compliant content. I think most importantly, as we're seeing um, lawsuits on the rise around accessibility, it does help with WAI and ARIA compliance. We have uh, a plugin called App Mention, which delivers social media style sharing in your application. So where you users basically can app mention uh, and send notifications to other users right within the editor. That's available in the uh, SDK um, and does have a server side component uh, where we look forward to bringing that to cloud. Um, Michael had showed you the uh, source code viewer in his demo previously. We have an advanced version of that available that brings a more IDE-like code editor experience to TinyMCE. And we find the developers actually love this. Uh, it has syntax highlighting, bracket matching, code folding, and um, multiple selections and carrots as well. So again, the kind of uh, IDE-like experience that you would find in um, in your your uh, software development environment um, that is also available within uh, TinyMCE as well. We have two new plugins, and Michael is going to demo these in a moment. One is Enhanced Media Embed that uh, makes it very, very easy to add rich media to your content. Somewhere around 1,800 rich media sources via Tiny NCE Cloud, and uh, those sources can be actually viewed right within the editor as you're creating the content. And we have a, a new plugin called Link Checker, which is a bit like spell checking for links, where it will identify invalid links in content. It will alert when uh, it thinks your link validity is questionable. And we found that this is a huge time saver and dramatically improves uh, content quality, which is obviously important. Dead links are uh, not a happy day for anyone. Now, all of these plugins are available uh, as part of what we call our Pro Bundle. It's definitely the best value. Um, starts at around about $10 per month. Uh, I should add that these uh, plugins that I previously mentioned are from as little as four dollars a month. So we have a subscription model available on all of these plugins and solutions, uh, and the Pro Bundle is the the way to go. So if you go to tinymc.com/pricing, uh, you'll see more about the options you have available there. And we also have a store on eFox, which is eFox.com/store, where you can check this stuff out. And the last thing I want to quickly talk about before we get to our uh, demo with Michael again is uh, the enterprise. So if your business is growing aggressively, um, we do have OEM options for you that uh, offer a, a better SLA for, for enterprise customers. Uh, you can get some custom licensing, you can change the package up a little bit. Um, and look, the best thing to do there is to contact us. And again, if you go to tinymc.com slash pricing, you'll uh, use this for a place to get started. There is a chat on uh, tinymc.com. So you just open that up, ping our sales guys, and then um, move on from there. So with that said, uh, we're going to uh, pass back to Michael, who will uh, run through TinyMC's Enhanced Media Embed and Link Checker plugins. Over to you, Michael. All right, thanks, Robert. Robert, just let me know when you're seeing my screen again, and we will start demoing. That I am. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk kind of quickly about three of the plugins that Robert just mentioned. I'm gonna start with the link checker. Uh, as Robert mentioned, there's there's nothing worse than publishing content to the web and finding out you have a bunch of broken links. If you've used and, and I should let me back up a step. This is just tiny MC on its own. We don't have these tools. Link checker and media embed are not natively part of WordPress. Uh, they can be but they're not natively, so my vanilla WordPress instance can't do this today. So this is just TinyMCE by itself in a web page, uh, but it's the same editor in WordPress, just looks slightly different. Uh, but anyway, so when you, when you use TinyMCE, there's a, a button somewhere that allows you to create and manipulate links. And there's nothing more fun than you're typing in a link or pasting in a link and you fat finger the link, and now you have a broken link. Well, with the link checker, you'll notice, first of all, it immediately highlighted it as red to tell me that there was a problem. Also in the dialog where I make links, you'll notice there's this little icon that tells me this URL is not valid. Well, if I correct the URL, even before I leave the dialog, you'll notice now that it tells me that URL is fine. And now that I come back here, the red background went away. So that's link checking. As you're inserting links, if you copy paste content that contains links, the system will identify where those links are broken and it will give you the opportunity to fix it. I have another one here in my content that's broken, same problem. 
I fix it, it identifies that that is indeed a, a link that responds appropriately. So now it doesn't show me a problem. So that's link checking. The idea here is let, let the content author find their problems while they're authoring. Don't make them save, preview, and click on every link to make sure it works. So that's link checking. The second thing, and I'm gonna get rid of my content here, is media embedding. So I'm gonna, I wanna show you what you get by default, and then I'm gonna show you what you get with media embedding functionality. So I'm gonna switch just another copy of that's the same editor, only I don't have our advanced media embedding function running here. So if I put in a video URL, Tiny MCE on its own is smart enough to know that it's actually a hyperlink. So even though I didn't open up a dialog and do insert hyperlink, you'll notice that it did at least turn it into a hyperlink, which is good, but in a great many cases, what we find is people want to insert links to things. So that's a YouTube video. Uh, I may want a slideshare URL. Same problem. I don't have, right, I get the URL, so that's good but a lot of these services have a way for me to embed an actual rich representation of that content in real time. And that's what media embeds do. So let's take that same video URL and let's put it in with the media embed service. And you'll notice what it did is it realized my link was to a YouTube page that contained a video. And it actually put in all of the relevant HTML to throw an actual live video player in here. So I can actually play this video in real time while I'm in the editor. So it's, it's a legit video viewer from YouTube. I can do the same thing with my SlideShare URL. When I put that in, I get the SlideShare embedding of a presentation in real time. So the idea behind media embeds is make it easy if you're pointing to rich content that lives on the web, make it easy for you through simply pasting in the URL of the source to put in the rich media. Now, could I do the same thing for those of you who are familiar with tools like YouTube? Uh, could I take this video? Could I go to uh, share? Could I go to embed? Could I grab that iframe? And could I go back to tiny and paste that into the source code view? Absolutely. There's no media embeds are not doing any magic. But what they're doing is they're eliminating the need for your content author to understand any of that is necessary. So by simply putting in the URL, the rest of it just takes care of itself. So that's, that's what media embeds do for us. Uh, the last thing I wanna cover, and I, I just wanna cover this very quickly because Robert mentioned it. He mentioned the source code viewer and our advanced source code viewer. So very quickly, this is the advanced source code viewer. So as Robert talked about, it's got things you're used to. If you're a developer, code folding, when I click on a tag, it'll find me the matching tag that goes with it. So if you spend a lot of time in HTML land manipulating WordPress content, the advanced code uh, viewer basically makes it a little bit easier for you to do what you're doing by color coding and better organizing and formatting the content compared to the standard code view. So that is link checking, media embeds, and the advanced code viewer. And now, Robert, I'm gonna send it back to you. Thank you very much, Michael. So as you can see, what eFox and what Tiny MC are about is not just delivering great uh, authoring and editing experiences. We are very, very passionate about trying to make the content creation experience as easy and as seamless as possible for content creators. So whether that's a person with their own blog, uh, and I manage a couple, or whether it's um, an organization such as eFox that runs WordPress for its corporate uh, blog with many, many users across many continents. Um, our objective is to try and, in a sense, get the editor out of the way to deliver a seamless and really wonderful, enjoyable content creation experience. So if you're not familiar with TinyMC, um, then I encourage you to go to tinymc.com. I just realized I hadn't been sharing my screen, I apologize. Go to uh, tinymc.com, discover tinymc today, where uh, you can uh, check out demos. Uh, we have a number of demos on tinymc.com, including our uh, premium plugins, as well as a number of demos that, edit, uh, that developers will love. You can also find us on Facebook and on uh, Twitter as well. 
So with that said, thank you very, very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed uh, Michael's demos. I hope we've given you a little bit of an insight into Tiny MCE uh, as uh, of the editor in WordPress. Also showing you that it's a, a solution available to you as a developer uh, outside of WordPress. And uh, with that said, we'll uh, pass it over to Jonathan to wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> that was uh, some wonderful information. Uh, I was particularly impressed with the power paste. Uh, that is a very powerful tool. You know, we have um, uh, lots of clients that come to us every day with, with WordPress uh, sites that they literally just pasting, uh, you know, Microsoft Word content into, and they're wondering why it doesn't look right or why they've got, you know, just enormous amounts of code on their site. Uh, that is something that every single U uh, WordPress site user needs. Um, very, very cool. Uh, the link checker also was very neat. I like how it highlights it. Uh, curious, uh, you know, if you don't mind me asking, how does it find those broken links? Is it actually reaching out and uh, looking for 404s? Yeah, so it actually, it actually does, I believe, a head request for those people who care about that level of technology. I think it does a head request with the URL and determines based on the response code whether or not it's valid. What a so yeah, idea. it's... It's it's making a it's making a request in real time uh, to determine whether or not that's valid. Great, great. Well, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Michael, for joining us today. Uh, thanks everybody else who's able to make it. And uh, as always, this webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash cloud access. Uh, we'll be putting it up on our site and uh, and sending it out through our various social media channels. So. Um, uh, if you weren't able to catch all of it, feel free to uh, to review the recorded version. Uh, we'll, we'll have it up in about 24 hours. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, thanks to both of you. And I uh, really appreciate your time, everybody. Thank you. Yep, have a wonderful day.